Hello and welcome to my review of Argent Provocateur's perfume. Uh, I'm not good with my French, I'm not sure if I'm going to say it right, but I'm pretty sure it's L'Argent, or maybe, or L'Agent. I'm not good with French, so I do apologise, but um, yeah, so we're actually snowed in in London, which worked out pretty well for me, because I got to come home early. It does actually make me laugh, because Britain doesn't seem to be able to handle snow very well. It's literally that much and all of the schools have been shut so I don't care I got to come home early so what a better time to do some perfume reviews <laughs> it's perfect so um, yeah I've chosen this one today I'm not really sure why I just looked at my shelf at what to review next and this one kind of just jumped out at me a bit so I don't know so here we go anyway so uh, this is an oriental floral perfume it was released in 2011 uh, it's actually the only Argent Provocateur perfume that I own, but I have smelt a few of their others, so I do kind of get their theme and their vibe and their ethos, I guess. Um, so, the, uh, I'll show you the bottle first. Um, I, haven't, I haven't got the box, I do apologise, I got this uh, from eBay, so uh, it was just, it came without the box, but it was definitely full because it is so heavy. Um, so here it is, it's an opaque bottle, it's kind of pearlescent-ish, it has a sheen on it. Um, it goes from kind of dusky pink down into black, which I will say right now is the perfect, it's the perfect packaging for what's inside and the way this perfume feels and smells. Um, and like the Jean-Paul Gaultier bottles, and I think most of their bottles are Jean Provocateur, they have a little clip that means, that means, sorry, that, me, that you have to take off before you can spray it, kind of like a safety, I guess, so it doesn't spray in your bag or your pocket or wherever you like to take your perfumes because they don't come with lids so this one is a little bit leathery I don't know if you can see it leather's probably going to be hard to shop on this but that's the bottle they're kind of like teardrop shapes all of their a lot of their bottles are the same shape just different colours and shades some of them are actually really beautiful um, so I'll go through the notes with you this one is crazy I think so this the top notes of this you've got three things, pink pepper, angelica and ylang ylang. I never know why they've named that twice, why not just call it ylang, I don't know. But um, yeah, there's a few things that I'm not too familiar with, but I've obviously done my research, I always like to do my research before I do my review, so I don't sound like an idiot when I'm talking. Um, I'll tell you about them in a minute though. So then the heart notes, uh, you've got jasmine, geranium, tuberose, rose and osmanthus. So a whole lot of flowers going on there. And then the base <clears throat> is packed with really, really heavy, thick notes. You've got patchouli, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> amber, sandalwood, myrrh, labdanum, tonka, incense and musk. So gathering, if you, I don't know how much you know about many, any of the notes in this, but the base of this is incredibly thick and heady and you can probably tell from what else is in it that it's a huge flower bomb of a perfume. So I've had it on this hand for a little while so it's been settling. I've actually worn this out once before. I'll quickly just tell you the first time I smelt this was um, a good friend of mine Rebecca wore this on Halloween last year and I smelt this on her all night I, and I, well, as soon as she walked in I said who's, who's wearing that, who's wearing that because it wafted in the room when we're, while we were getting ready and uh, she described it to me and all night I kept smelling her and even on the bus on the way home when it was about four o'clock in the morning and we were a little bit tipsy I could still smell it so I don't know about everybody else's skin but on her it lasted a long time and I wore this out very recently for my friend's birthday and it lasted a hell of a long time on me as well um, it's also a morpher it does change quite a bit I would say from first spray to dry down. So w when it opens, um, it's, <clears throat> this is, I've never smoked something like this before, it's, this bottle describes it perfectly because it, the top notes of it are very flowery but it's, it's heavy flowers, we're not talking, you know, kind of light baby's breath and freesia and things like that. This has got really heavy flowers in it, like geranium and tuberose and jasmine, they're all quite heady and pungent. Um, but this, the pink pepper gives this a slight lightness, not a lot, not a lot, but it, it does have a slight airiness and a slight powderiness to it. But it's extremely, extremely floral and 
it's like a but dark at the same time because those bass notes are really pushing up and making this even more heady uh, than if they weren't there. I I always think of the corpse bride. It sounds bizarre, but this is the bouquet that she would be carrying. It's it's a bridal bouquet or bouquet, whatever you want to call it. But it's it's a dark. It's got a very dark twist to it. Um, so. The flowers that stick out the most, I don't know, it kind of smells a little bit makeup-y to me. It's got that slightly plasticky vibe, at first, only at first though. Um, it's, it's really hard because I would say whoever made this perfume is an, is an absolute connoisseur of their, tr of their craft because it's so well blended. It's something that, you know sometimes something can smell like one thing but also smell like ten things at once and you do, your nose doesn't really know what it's doing. This is like that. It's, for me, it's really I can't discern one thing from the other. It just it just smells like a lot of heavy flowers and a lot of dark resinous notes underneath. Um, so, just a few few bits about what's in it. Angelica is a, kind of smells very herbally apparently um, and sweet, depending on what part of it they use. I'm, it doesn't. I'm not really sure what in this angelica wise i'm not sure if it's the top part of, of the plant or if it's the root the root of it apparently is much more intense and much more murky and dark um and then asmanthus smells apparently a lot like apricot blossom which is quite a light uh, light smelling flower but i would say that in this it's it's not it's, it's very dark um You've also got, um, in the base, you've got three resins, so take that into account. You've got myrrh, labdanum, and you've got amber. Resins are always very thick and dark and heavy smelling, and that is what this dries down into. It starts out with the, the flowers and a slight lightness and a slight sweetness, but when it does eventually dry down and change, which does take a long time, at least an hour for me anyway, you are left with an almost masculine, very, very resinous, dark, um, incense -y perfume. It's, it's, incense is probably the main, the main thing in it. Incense is actually a no, I'm not sure if I mentioned that before, I do apologise. Uh, but it, yeah, it smells like very dark, incense -y flowers. It's very sultry, it's, it's extremely sexy. This, it may, it's like, kind of like a dominatrix perfume. <laughs> I don't know if that sounds right or not but it's extremely sexual and it's I think this is something that not everybody would be confident enough to wear because it's definitely a nighttime perfume and it makes a big big statement I'd say it's probably the darkest and most unique of all of their perfumes a lot of them are, are very flowery and kind of classic and boudoir smelling this one's like the nighttime one that when you dress up in leather and a whip, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, but yeah, that's it, right? It, it just, it kind of screams sexual prowess and power. That's all I can say, really. It, that's what it makes me think of. It's just, I don't think it's for the faint-hearted. It's, see, I'm, I've got it on this hand dry, and it's so much more resinous. Myrrh is, hello, hello, hello. It's already too late. I'm learning a hard lesson with my camera here. I've learned that I can't speak for more than eight minutes if my camera's on HD mode, which I wanted to do. I wanted my cam my reviews to be HD and lovely, so apparently I can't do that. So it's just cut me off at myrrh. So I'm back in my room again. I've just realised a little bit too late that the whole review, well, the end of the review got messed up. So I'm just going to have to apologise and finish up the review where I left off. Very quickly, I was talking about the myrrh and... Um, the dry down of the perfume, which is literally, it, it turns completely darker, it turns much more resinous, uh, and it goes a lot more masculine and deep and dark and more sultry than it ever was, than it, than it was in the beginning. Um, I'm going to have to wrap it up there really because I'm so frustrated that I've lost yet another review. Mm -hmm. This happened before <laughs> in my last couple of reviews that I did, so at least from now on I know that I can, I know my limit, or I can just record in a lower resolution to make them last longer. So sorry about that, but that's my uh, abrupt ending of uh, Argent Provocateur. <laughs> oh God. I'm going to go and have a hot bath now and relax because I hate technology right now. Okay, bye. <laughs>